Three weeks ago, I received the letter from Irina Bokova, General Secretary of UNESCO, telling us that we were to be the first major symphony orchestra to be appointed UNESCO Artist for Peace in recognition of the work we are doing, which goes very parallel to the whole ethic of UNESCO, to bring peace through multicultural ideas, through talking to each other, in our case, making music together, 40 countries of the world. And from this moment on, every member of our orchestra will be out there spreading further the message that UNESCO also stands for. And so I'm very honored and delighted that this happens at the exact time of our 15th birthday. The World Orchestra for Peace is hereby designated UNESCO Artist for Peace in recognition of its outstanding dedication to promoting through music, cultural diversity, internet, intercultural dialogue, and a culture of peace, core ideals and aims of the organization. Thank you so much. Great to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Fine. Fine. Oh. <laughs> so good to see you. Everyone here? No. Except, um, except Vosburg, Norb Norburg, um, Norbert, Dal the two Dalsackers. There's been a bomb scare in Frankfurt. They're stuck at the airport. Julia and Norbert. But the Berlin girl will cover the sixth form. And uh, I, start, I start with Ryan. <laughs> I start with Ryan. <laughs> when conductor Valery Gergiev arrived in London, he greeted his players like old friends. Oh, Seville from Ivan. But you live now in Berlin. <laughs> this musical camaraderie has always been at the heart of the World Orchestra for Peace. They came to St. Petersburg, but without you, Philharmonic. Oh. The direction of the orchestra is in the hands of Charles Kay, former executive administrator to Sir George Shalty. Back in 1992, they were instrumental in organizing an evening which became the seed for the whole idea. A surprise 80th birthday concert for Sir George held at Buckingham Palace. The centerpiece was the Siegfried Idyll. That piece, played by 15 musicians from the 15 orchestras he had conducted in the year of his 80th birthday. We had Rainer Kuchel at the right. Vienna Philharmonic. Yeah. We had Sally Pendlebury, Edward van der Spa from the London, London Symphony, Symphony Orchestra. Orchestra. Every orchestra that he had conducted yeah. and he was visibly touched by this. The achievement of bringing together players from all around the world made a profound impression on Sir George Schulte. that we musicians can produce a united Europe or more. We can produce a united world against Chicago joy. Why can't the British? <laughs> One day I met Mrs. Boutros Boutros Galli in New York and she said, you know, it's the 50th anniversary of the United Nations. Do you think it would be possible to get an orchestra or something like that? 
And so that was the idea of getting orchestral players from all over the world to play together. I made a list of players. I made one, two, three, four, five, thinking the first one come, the second one come. All the ones accepted, all of you. And I couldn't have a most wonderful thing to think that all my musician friends in that quality coming without any fee. I think it is wonderful. It's really amazing. But of course, that's not enough. We must make also amazing music. Now let's go. What are your memories of that first World Orchestra for Peace concert? I remember the security. <laughs> that was uh, amazing because uh, you know you had world leaders from uh, from everywhere, and the, the the sort of abiding memory, I guess, is looking into the audience once we'd got in, um, and seeing the the two sides of the Middle East conflict um, surrounded by guns, um, and then at the end of the concert both sides smiling, really enjoying the, the concert. It was fantastic. I remember meeting lots of um, colleagues from all over the world and it was, and playing with them for the first time and it was quite easy, you know. with Scholte were magical. He was very special, of course. Uh, and uh, the concert went so well that uh, every one of us saw. I, I hope this is not the last one. Sir George Sholte planned to conduct a second concert, but died suddenly in 1997. The mantle passed to another dynamic conductor, Valery Gegiev. There was a tremendous uh, rapport between the two of them. We knew that he would continue the ideas of my husband. All my life, i grown up in war, in revolution, both fascist and communist, taught me passionately believe in peace. For me, uh, Sir George Scholte was one of the greatest conductors of 20th century, one of the very, very, very best uh, musicians, certainly very, very best conductors I ever heard myself. I quickly understood that after my first opportunity to meet Sir Joe Scholte, how committed he was to improve this world. music making here with this group of musicians is always exceptionally human. No one has to do it. We all come together because we expect to enjoy it as much as we did before. Uh, we love it obviously and everyone thinks that it's uh, something you don't want to exclude from your life. And that makes it very precious, these three, four, five days we spend together every year. For me, the difference to another orchestra, they respect each other. Everybody is give 
maximum of his power and, and uh, so uh, maybe we don't need more than, than one rehearsal and we are close yeah. together. It is Which inspiring is, yes, to see uh, yes. and hear yeah. great players uh, with this will to, mm. to really play their socks off. And how do you sort out where you're all going to sit? Because you're all principals. Yes, I, I mean, the, that can be a nightmare, but... <laughs> we, we don't really sort it out. Charles sorts it out. I talk very carefully and privately, obviously, with Valeri, and it's important to him in each piece that his front desk players are those with whom he has had the most experience because they have to pull the rest of the section. Having said that, we change always between pieces and we leave it to the other sections, the wind, the percussion, the brass, uh, all of them to decide amongst themselves who plays first. And this is done, you wouldn't believe, with so much harmony, there is never, ever a problem. So, good afternoon. Happy, happy to see you all. And... On day one, though, when you bring together all these musicians from different orchestras who play in different ways, different styles, how do you try and make them gel on the first rehearsal? The World Orchestra for Peace obviously has this unique ability to hear each other. All together, the orchestra and each individual has this blessing, you know. It is terribly exciting to spend one hour just quietly, not even talking very much, and just playing and everyone listens. Today, in the first second of the f this first rehearsal, this young, very young musician, the trumpetist from St. Petersburg, it was his first uh, appearance here with this famous solo in the Fifth Symphony of Mahler. And it's typical of this orchestra, so every time we try to welcome maybe another 10 young people. <laughs> Schulte, under Sir George Schulte, who had a huge personality and then was replaced by somebody else with a huge personality, mm -hmm. uh, Valery Gergiev. Tell me what it's like playing for him. I expected some, somebody with uh, very tough markings and he's exactly the opposite. He's a very natural conductor. He used much his hands to, to do every, everything and uh, he has a special way to communicate. Imagine Imagine you are in the ocean, sometimes, but sometimes. Maybe this is closer to a little bit rougher water. So your boat is a little bit like this, not... Let's try it. 301. 